What's up, what's up, beautiful people? Tuning in today for the podcast. This is our first time doing it, so bear with us. Um, I'm Spence Crosby, also known as Faiska. I'll get into that a little bit later. We also got William Taylor, CEO of New Wave Coaching, personal trainer. And, and Tyler's Wellness in the building, helping open minded individuals make themselves a priority every day. Hey, that sounds like a commercial, doesn't it, y'all? Like, he's just like, man, makes you want to invest in something. Like, yeah. I can make myself a priority. I, I think I need to do that. But yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the guys on the podcast for today. Actually, it's going to be us for majority of the time. We might have different people in and out, but uh, to elaborate a little bit more on who we are, they did briefly. I'm a personal trainer slash business owner slash content creator, whatever you want to call it. I'm known on the social media world as Spence Crosby, Faiska. Faiska is my capoeira name. That means spark lightning. So... That's the name that my instructor gave me, and I love Capoeira. Will, man, tell us about you, man. Tell us a little bit more about you. You got your boy, William Taylor, right here. New Wave Coaching, man. I'm a transformation coach. Uh, I've been in the fitness for all my life, pretty much, you know, and I just want to share my passion with the world, help people get in shape, help people eat right, Uh, just high perform all around, you know, high performance, you know, get to the bag, get to the money, uh, build your self-confidence, build your body, invest in yourself. So that's all it's about, man, teaching people how to surf, the waves of life, man. Hey, so, I like uh, that. Surf the waves surf, of life. Surf, surf the waves of life, man, like a surfer do. So. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm going to kick it to Tyler. And... All right. <clears throat> well, actually, I can kind of attest for that, actually, being a, a, a high-performance coach there. He actually gave me a book that sparked everything for me. Uh, it was Think and Grow Rich. And now, after you know learning the philosophies of that book, it allowed me to open my mind and help other people learn that they can literally like make money doing things they love to do and so that's how i can literally change the change the world with like the knowledge from these books that we can like learn from and internalize that knowledge and then create it in our own ways and make things happen for ourselves nice nice so we got two guys that two up-and-coming young entrepreneurs all of us are young entrepreneurs and we are we're visionaries that's why we decided to do a podcast and with that, with this podcast, what's special about this one is the fact that this is like a tea podcast. I'm an avid tea drinker. These two, they're up and coming avid tea drinkers. Um, go ahead and taste the, the tea real quick I made. Go ahead. Give it a taste, y'all. Right here, yeah, go ahead and taste it. All right. All right. Before we do that, I forgot. We, we set the intention. Set the intention. Okay. All right. So what I mean by setting the intention is it's like when people give toast to drinks or whatever, like a special ceremony. That's what tea is. It used to be... Uh, one of those popularized things in feudal Japan. Um, I'm an avid historian of uh, Oda Nobunaga, who was uh, one of the uh, first unifiers of Japan. And basically, he used to have tea ceremonies and kind of talk about philosophy and different things. So I kind of want to bring that that elaborate nature into our podcast. So set the intention, fellas. Um, I think we should a successful and relaxed podcast Mm -hmm. for you guys to make sure y'all enjoy it and to like definitely take away those gems that we're going to drop into it because like i said we're all visionaries and we're all bringing something new to the table guys go ahead and taste the tea real quick let me know what you think it's a nice tea set here too Mm. thank (laughs) you thank you it's perfect perfect temperature right now y'all taste that spice yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) so that's my turmeric and ginger blend um, I put a little more pepper in there just because it helps with the absorption of turmeric. Um, but black pepper, right? Black pepper, yes. Heard black pepper, heard yes, heard yes. So, right. um, I love to drink tea in the mornings just because it wakes my body up and whatnot. Yeah, nice little spice. Man. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Um, definitely gonna wake you up. That's yeah. like it's like almost like a substitute caffeine, but it doesn't give you like that that boost. But it's just kind of like, dang, this is spicy. Like, yeah, 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 I like this. It's almost like a shot. It is exactly, and that's what <laughs> like I'm like. A, a lot of shot. people. When they when they see my tea set, they're like, man, this this is small, and it's just they're not used to having a small teacup teacups like this. So mm-hmm. this is more like the proper etiquette, as I call it. And I'm a little bougie at times with my tea, so Where, um, I did upgrade to tea leaves. I don't use the tea bags anymore. So shout out to myself for that, cause um, I love my tea leaves instead. It just makes it get it makes it more authentic for me. I don't like the tea bags anymore, so I'm kind of bougie now. Um, I still got my tea bags from time to time. Hmm. But yeah, guys, I'm glad you like the tea. I do like this a lot. Um, it makes it of more value in these small cups. I know, right? It makes you yeah. appreciate the taste, <laughs> yeah. the flavor. you got this big thing of tea and just like... Yeah, you just like go... Either. Like, you got to actually <laughs> sip on it, you know? And feel free, guys, to go ahead and pour you some more. Appreciate um, that. 
let's go ahead and talk about. Well, first off, it's a new year. New it's twenty twenty one. It's new year, new you. As everyone's like uh, way of life, I would say, new year, new me. But um, what I want to talk about today is shifting your mindset, fellas. Talk to me about shifting your mindset. Talk to me. Shifting the mindset, man. The mindset is it's it's eighty percent, it's ninety percent mindset and everything you do. You know, I came to that realization. Uh, just for me, kind of like through exercising, really, like getting back into shape and sports from high school, you know, it just kind of changed my mindset, made me think about things, made me uh, value myself putting in that work to achieve a goal and then being able to be prideful about that. And then the next task I can, if I am having trouble, I can look back and look at my past accomplishments. So uh, always staying in that frame of mind, always staying in that kind of like a growth mindset, looking to try new things. Uh, I feel like that was the key that changed everything because that's that's what it was about, my mindset. First, my mindset started shifting, and then I started doing different things, started trying different things rather than doing the same things I was doing, and it allowed me to grow. So Now, talk to me about like you, Will, specifically. Okay. How you re- When it started to shift your mindset, when did you start to see things beyond the scope of what you were taught? When did you start to see that? I know for me, it started like when I was in, um, around the time I was 19, um, 11 years ago, when I really started to see like, man, this, this is more than life than just working and just getting, just to surviving. Mm-hmm. You know, I started reading a lot more and all this stuff, but talk to me about when you started really shifting your mindset. Okay, okay. Well, growing up, you know, I was always kind of like a wise kid, you know, I had stayed with my pops and he was like an older gentleman who took care of me and my brother you know my brother's dad and uh just even growing up as a kid i could kind of take from his wisdom and he taught me a lot of wise things as a kid you know like i'm going into there's like say for example salt fire or something in the kitchen uh like a grease fire i can go in there and pour salt on it i know the the salt's gonna put the fire out and everybody's like grown adults like how did you do that how did you know how to do that (laughs) nice yeah yeah And it's just because, just picking up those little tricks of the trade from an older man, uh, he taught me a lot. Uh, and then, I, when I was a kid growing up, I always wanted to be older. I couldn't wait till I was older. I, t- <laughs> I think that's like everyone. Limitations, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to walk to school, yeah. and I got to do the school work they want me to do. And, right, right. Um, so, growing up, I kind of started growing out of that, uh, kind of through two mentors, you know, uh, and... Sports really helped with that, I feel, um, along the way. But even then, you know, get out of high school, you start doing crazy stuff, start partying, start doing the things yeah. that I couldn't do because yes. I was so, you know, contained to parents and whatnot. Um, and from there, shifting my mindset, I feel like I had got to a point in life where I was working full time. I was going to school part time, trying to do that. Um, had a girlfriend, you know, Ooh, yeah. had a roommate, man. and it was just like, man, a lot, you know, these people, like, I didn't really understand the human dynamics. I had read a couple of books, read, like, uh, How to Win Friends, Influence People, maybe a year or so before that, but uh, other than that, dealing in relationships with people was kind of new to me, so, um, with his roommates and all this type of stuff, and dealing with different people's personalities, so... Reading one book that really kind of set things off for me, I remember I was like at the DHS office. I had some medical bills I was trying to pay off working and stuff. And uh, this guy gave me a free book. It was called The Seven Highly Effective Habits. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And that book, reading through that book, it was like the guy was explaining his relationships with his wife and maybe with friends or whatever. And it just kind of hit. It was like, man, I'm experiencing that same thing in my life right now. So from there, that kind of like kind of triggered and allowed me to see a lot of cl- gave me clarity in that point in my life and from there it really gave me a lot of clarity and that book really helped yeah nice it's, it's crazy how subconsciously we project the things that we want to like see and we attract those people yeah. while we're all here together now you know we're all have that we're visionaries we're young entrepreneurs and we're trying to break away from what our parents what they did I think that's very important, and the fact that that guy gave you a free book, that's always, when someone gives you a free book, that's like free like free information free so that way you can knowledge, so that way you can really invest into making yourself a priority, like Tyler said earlier, exactly. and I think that's very important, and it's good that you always was wise when you were younger and stuff, and realizing those differences and stuff, and drawing those lines and connecting the dots, and like, man, like, 
this is life is not what people just tell me it is. It's, it's much more. It's deeper than this. So Tyler, man, talk to me about shifting your mindset, which is like I feel like seeing you on Instagram, man. I feel like I love your slogan, "Make yourself a priority." I think that's important, man. So talk to us about you know shifting your mindset, man. <laughs> man, honestly, uh, that phrase right there was my big uh, shift for me. I felt like before I was living my life always for other people, mm, you know, man. <laughs> and especially like childhood. It's like. You know, you live life and you're told to do a certain thing and go down a certain path. And so I was doing everything I thought I was supposed to do. I was in school. I was always, you know, I never got in trouble in school or anything. I actually had perfect attendance all through high school and everything. I was that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be. <laughs> I was almost like you, but yeah, you probably got me. Perfect attendance. I was late. Late a couple times. But. Especially senior year. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Continue, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, and uh, so, you know, always doing the things that I thought I was supposed to do. I had um, went to college. I was also working multiple jobs. And, like, you know, at one point, I was just, like, I was in these jobs. I was in a sales position at a car uh, car sales job. I want to say the names, you know, just in case. But. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, so I was selling cars, and I was looking around me, and all the people around me were, like, 40, 50-plus years old, and they're like looking tired of life like just sad. this is every day yeah. yeah sad like can't wait to just go home and do nothing do like, no oh my god, god. <laughs> dude yes 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 and i was just like i need to get out of this world and see like what people my age are doing because like this is all i know right now i'm like literally just talking to old people right. <laughs> all day and so i quit that job and uh went straight to a part-time job at planet fitness where then I met Will and met a ton of other people, and then Will got me connected with you, Spence. Yeah, and, right, yeah. And, you know, it all started to shift everything. And uh, uh, the book, uh, in, Will introduced um, uh, to... Seven <laughs> Habits. Uh, no, not Seven Habits. Um, How to Think and Grow Rich. Influence people. Oh, ah, think and grow, really grow yeah, rich, yeah, rich. yeah. Well, yeah, say that so, book, Nick. Say that book again. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Okay, okay. And uh, that book itself shifted my mindset to start seeing more opportunities every day that like were always available, but I wasn't taking them, right? right? Just like see, hearing in the stories of other people in the past, they're them taking opportunities that were presented to them showed me like, oh, I could do something like that. Mm -hmm. And then it started shifting my mindset like, oh, make yourself a priority. You have the ability yes, to do yes, the thing. Right. Opportunities aren't given, they're created. They cr Man, <laughs> gems, people, I'm telling you. Gems, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so you have to create your own opportunities. And the moment you shift to like thinking that you can do it, believe in yourself, the world, like there is no limit. The sky's not the limit. Exactly. <laughs> that someone told you the sky's the limit and you believe them and you and i think the theme of everyone's life is definitely believing in yourself is key a lot of people don't believe in themselves because not only because of what they've been taught from an early age um because we give society gives us those limitations they, they subconsciously place it because they want us to be have a worker's mentality like you'll never be the next steve jobs or bill gates or you know, the next professional athlete, the right. likelihood of that happening is, is slim. You're not even good enough. But it, once you start programming, pro programming kids to really think that way, they, their create, creative juices are just cut off from them. They don't believe in themselves. And I think making yourself a priority is essential because a lot of times in life, we always try to please others because we look at them like, dang, you know, I want them to be proud of us. And um, that's not how we should go through life. You know, mm -hmm. making your, make yourself a priority is key. Believing in yourself, as you heard from Will, like for him, he saw, he connected those dots and he said like, yo, this has to be deeper than, than what's, what's given to me right now. And it's all about shifting your mindset. And with me, that's how it started. I didn't really start to really believe in myself until I was around 18 or 19. And uh, growing up with a single parent, she did what she could that was best for us. And uh, however... My stepdad played a huge role in me believing in myself. And um, I know for me, a lot of times I didn't, in high school, I used to be like, oh, I could never be a really good athlete. But there was, I had glimpses of that athletic ability where I was like, hey, I am good. And I had people tell me like, yo, you're really good. You just, what's up? Like, you just don't believe in yourself enough? I'm like, I didn't know how to, know, I didn't know how to answer it. But now that I'm older and much more mature, I'm like, yeah, I didn't believe in myself. But I think um, my mindset really shifted around 18 and 19. I started to believe more. And I always had an entrepreneurial mindset, like I, such as you two. I know you guys have that same creative juices. It's like, 
yo, I don't want to work a nine to five. There's nothing wrong with working nine to five. Don't get me wrong. Like you have to do what you have to do, but at the same time, that's why you, you have different strokes for different folks. You know, nine to five is if it's perfect for you, if it fits your lifestyle, that's what you want to do. That's, that's all power to you. Just as a person wants to not do a nine to five, all power to them. But for us three on the podcast, we definitely always want to work for ourselves and create new avenues of money. And um, it started when I was around 2021 20, when I created RCXP, which, by the way, my name is Robert Spencer Crosby. Yes, I have a senator's name. My teacher told me that in high school. I um, know that. Yeah, <laughs> Robert Spencer Crosby. Um, but Robert Extreme Exercise Program was something I created when I was 21. I was calling myself the mobile personal trainer. My first client was a lady from State Farm. And I would go to people's houses. I would go to, to like their gyms and their apartments, and I would train them. And that's where I already knew. Like I always wanted to work for myself. I could probably count on both hands how many times I ever worked 40 hours in my life. I never liked working 40 hours in my life because it was just something that just I didn't like. Mm-hmm. Never liked it. Um, so seeing my mom work really hard, I didn't know how to really appreciate it until I got older and stuff like that. Like she just that's what she was given. And she still managed to do it on her own. So shout out to my mom for that. But uh, I just knew I wanted a different avenue. So with that, I want to talk about a little bit more, not only shifting your mindset, but what does it mean to really believe in yourself? What does that mean? Like, Mm. we could say that, like, believe in yourself, but what does that mean? Man, uh, you want to start with me? Uh, Let me think on that. Go ahead. Take your time. I'm going to say, you know, everyone's going to have a different, uh, like, spark for what that's going to be. Everyone has their own walls that they put up through their life. You know, it's this is some something that I've said in the past, is you're kind of like a wizard. You have magic to, like, either create things, and you're creating walls, or you're creating mm. opportunity. Ooh, so, I like that. I like <laughs> that. Especially the walls, because keep going. I like that, because yeah. that's what we do a lot. Yeah, and so as we're going through, we're creating all these walls that we end up forgetting about, and then now, as you turn around, you have to now create a, something to destroy those walls. You have to break them down and replace them with something else, bridges or whatever it is. So you believing in yourself is being, oh, I built all this stuff in the past. I was doing this. It was me. And I'm the mm. person who can change mm. it. Right. So, you know, taking that action of saying, okay, I can do something. And like recognizing anywhere in any aspect of your life what you can do, that there's one step you can take to move you slightly towards that goal, no matter what it is. Yes. So I, I'm a, to to even talk about that a little bit more. Um, telling yourself I can. Um, that's something that. Quick little story. I always struggle with backflips because um, of the fear of like I'm gonna fall. Telling myself like, yo, you're not gonna do this. But then you tell yourself, you get these mantras like, I'm gonna do this. What really helped me a lot too was anime, which we'll talk about that in another segment, but. I love the trials and tribulations different anime characters go through because they believe, like, I can, I can. And it might sound corny, but it really gives me my hype. Like, it just hypes me up. But anyways, telling myself I can do it when I did backflips. When I finally got it, I was like, you can do this. And I would tell myself constantly, like, I got it, I got it, I got it. And then you just, it snaps. You just, you just start doing it. And I think that's the essential element when it comes to believing in yourself. Telling yourself I can because... We hear a lot of I can't. And as a trainer and a business owner, I always tell my clients, like, yo, we don't say I can't here. I'd rather you cuss and say something else than I can't. That's the worst word or worst phrase I could ever hear anyone say because I'm all about seeing that vision, manifesting those thoughts into reality because we are co-creators of the highest source, whatever you want to call it. We can create in this 3D plane. And uh, I think it's essential that we say we can uh, I can attest to believing in yourself. I remember when I was a kid, I wasn't always a confidence kid. Mm. I was kind of like the class clown, kind of dorky, <laughs> wanted to fit in. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Kind of got picked on, didn't get picked on, might pick on, you know. So uh, I remember one of the main shifts for me to start believing in myself was I remember, I believe it was like maybe junior high, high school, we started lifting weights. Mm. And we would lift weights and, you know, where it's like running or whatever it was. Yeah, I remember one day, I had my boy Dre, we were lifting together, and uh, had some heavy weights on the thing. I was doing an incline bench press, and then I almost got it up like I'm strong, it's heavy. And he's like, hey, come on, let's go, let's go. And he just starts hyping me up, starts hyping me up, <laughs> hyping me up. And then he's just getting so hyped, and then boom, I just do it. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, yeah, woo, you strong as hell, bro. 
And I, I never remember, I remember that, like, yeah, man, like, damn, it made me feel really accomplished and felt like I could do something. And from that day forward, I, even if I didn't have the belief in myself, I would kind of rent someone else's belief or, you know, like, oh, you see other people who are saying, like, you can do this or pay attention to what they're saying that you're good at and just kind of go off of that and use that momentum to then start believing in myself, you know. And, uh, yeah, so I'd say that's a good place to start. I mean, just kind of. Even now, I kind of think back on my past successes whenever I'm about to do something that might be like stepping out of my comfort zone, like hopping on a podcast or doing some YouTube videos or whatever it is. I like to look back on my past and say, well, you did this in high school or, you know, you graduated with this certification or you ran through this race or you you stayed up all night and you worked on that English paper and you turned it in and just kind of use those and kind of stack them up and say, you know, you can do this and hype myself up. You gotta be your own hype man. You, know? you, do. Uh, you do. In our heads, we get in our heads a lot and we start to say like, oh, you can't do this mm-hmm. or you can't do that. But the thing is, you gotta realize is there's people on the outside who are gonna see your stuff and they're gonna be like, yeah, you can't do that or you suck. So it's like, if you are inside of your head saying, oh yeah, the same things that they're saying, it's never gonna work. You're gonna like fall down every time. You're gonna beat yourself up. So you gotta at least have your own back and say in your head like, yo, I can't do this. I can't do this. Even if other people are, they're gonna say like you suck or whatever it is. You have to believe in yourself because no one else will, you know. And the quote that I live by a lot is a Chinese proverb. It says, "Those who said it cannot be done should not interrupt the ones that's doing it." And I love that quote because I've been living by that for a long time. And as Will said too, it's just about being in high school, lifting weights. Someone's boosting you up, and that's when your confidence starts to shine. I know when I was in school, a guy named. Uh, Shout out to Zach Albrick if you ever listens to this. But Zach Albrick was like, yo, Rob, you're one of the fastest people on a track team, If you, uh, but you died out so soon. And I was very explosive. So like, like you, Will, like explosive, boom, that burst. Right. And um, it, it, I always had glimpses of, of being like of, of me shining, but I never really believed in it because all my life I've been told, you're too small. Uh, really, you're just too small. I was a small kid in high school. I didn't really grow until I was like, 16 17 and um at the time i think i left high school at 5'9, 163 now i'm like 5'11, 185 but i say that because a lot of times those walls are created not only by other people but by ourselves because we start to project what they say into our subconscious we're programming ourselves we can't do something and i think when i like i said when i broke it before it was around 18 19 or well 20 when i started to really break that and in my later 20s, that's when I was like, the world is mine. The world is mine. I could do anything. I'm doing things at my age at 30 that a lot of people are like, man, you're 30? Like, yeah, back lift is nothing. Back handspring, whatever. Like, I do it all because I always wanted to learn this as a kid. And I was exposed to a lot of things when I was later on in life. Because once again, the single mom element, she's going to do what she can to protect her offspring. So it's just like, I'm going to hold you guys close versus letting you guys explore. Which, there's no fault in that. It's all about survival. And uh, that's why I tell people that's younger, older than me, like, what do you want to do when you grow up? I don't care if you're 45. What do you want to do when you grow up? Stop putting limitations on yourself because you're a certain age or you, you're, this person couldn't do this or you compare yourself to LeBron James. Like, everyone has their unique talents and abilities. And you have to realize that as soon as you can, don't even put a time frame on it. Just dive deep in yourself and explore who you are. And that's for me. I always want to explore my body, especially like the way when Bruce Lee had a book, uh, I think it's called The Art of Manifesting the Human Body or something like that. And I was like, before I read that book, I wanted to write a book about that. And I was like, Bruce Lee already beat me too? Dang it. But anyways, <laughs> I was dead. Yeah, it? right, right. <laughs> so I really, when I was reading that book, I was like, I really want to express my body in, in so many different ways. I want to be insanely flexible, uh, be able to do flips. And Capoeira really allowed that avenue for me. And really, that's what I felt at home. I felt confident because I'm like, not only am I connected to uh, my ancestors, but I'm also, it's just art. It is art. You know, it's just art, and I love it. And it really gave me my confidence. And having a martial arts background besides Capoeira, like in Taekwondo and boxing and kickboxing, it really helped me on Capoeira. But I think that's when I really started to believe in myself. My later 20s when I was like, okay, we're in prime. Where is this prime time mode? Now it's really time to take over. Now that I'll be 31 this year, happy new year again, once again, everybody. And um, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to it. Um, So we talked about the elements about believing in yourself, shifting your mindset. 
Um, I think those are all very important, but I did want to talk about making yourself a priority, which probably we didn't really discuss this pre-podcast in terms of making yourself a priority, but I really like that because once again, people say that loosely, like, hey, I'm going to do me this year. Are you really going to do you this year? What does it mean to make yourself a priority? Because even though you might have kids Mm -hmm. and you're like, man, my kids come first, but at the same time, you have to make sure you're also meeting your needs. So Tyler, talk to me about making yourself a priority man all right before we do this i'm gonna jump right into this first part uh you had talked uh and told people in there to start finding something that you're passionate about right yes and i want to start and say that's how you make yourself a priority you try new things and you start exploring that you find something that you're interested in and just keep building yes and so that's the key is you continuously realize an idea whatever that idea is you find that one thing Keep growing on it. It's like stacking Legos, right? Yes. You get started. You're like, oh, man, I don't know what I'm going to build. You just start. You just, got a foundation. Yes. It's like, oh, this looks kind of nice. And you start building on top of that. Next thing you know, you have a little house. Then you can keep building. You got a city. You know, you just keep going. So same thing with making yourself a priority. You start with one thing. You mm-hmm. want to better your health. Well, how are you going to do it? Just starting with your food, starting with your exercise. What are you going to do? You know, and there's one thing you can keep breaking it down in the smaller, smaller steps that you can take, whether it be just getting up right now as you listen to this podcast and go for a walk, you know, whatever it is right now. That's that's key. Yeah. And people like to overthink things. We do. People like to say, oh, like I have to get in shape and uh, I need a trainer and I got to have this diet. I got to know about the diet and I got to do this type of workout. All you got to do is just start doing it. You know, uh, what did Nike just, say? Just yeah, so cliche, but it it, <laughs> right. it provides. You know, just right. do, it. just do something. Yep. You know, rather than you know, you know what to do. You know that you can eat clean, eat yes. healthier. Right. What's best food for you? And do exercise, physical exercise. Drink lots of water. So just start by drinking a glass of water. Start by going around, walk around the block. Try to put it in your day every day. Maybe you know, first thing in the morning or after dinner. You know. Cleaning, any type of exercise to get you up and active, and then it starts from there. You know, taking what you can learn piece by piece and just putting this puzzle piece together. That's all it is, just a giant puzzle piece. I think another quote. Um, I can't remember if this is a uh, like once again. I'm a Eastern like historian here. I love that stuff. But anyways, (laughs) um, it says the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. step, And I love that one because he said it. Drinking a glass of water, people. When he says that, those are the minor battles that you have to just take pride in that. If you haven't drinking, drink a glass of water in, let's say, a week, right? And the next day you do a glass of water, cherish, relish that victory because that's essential because it's going to build the confidence. Once again, what Tyler said earlier, those Legos, you're taking that drink of water. For the first time, you had a glass of water in a week. First time a week you had a glass of water. That's another Lego compounded on another one. That's a victory for you. So relish those victories because those are important in building your self-esteem and your confidence. Yeah, and I can honestly say confidence is built. I've seen it. A clear example of it was I had bought a motorcycle. I bought this motorcycle. I didn't know how to ride motorcycles. I didn't know how to shift the gears and, you know, the brakes and whatnot. I had a moped, so I was kind of familiar. So I buy this motorcycle. Me and my boy, he's out there kind of teaching me how to do it. I'm riding up the street. It's tough. The gears are failing out. I'm kind of getting it, kind of not getting it. When it's time for me to perform and there's traffic going and, oh, the di- the bike st- stalls out. Now I'm stuck in traffic, you know. So uh, it would be tough, you know. There's some days I look at it. I'd watch, like, the YouTube videos, like, worst accidents and see people all messed up, banged up. And then the next day I'm looking at my bike like, man, like, I don't, I don't want to ride the bike today, you know. <laughs> so I'm thinking, like, man, maybe I made this huge mistake. Maybe whatever, like, you know, I can't do it. And then sometimes I get out there, I ride it, kind of ride safe, unsure, you know. Um, and then it all changed once I took the riding course. And the riding course, they taught us exactly how to ride the motorcycles, exactly what to do, how to start it, you know, the training and the hands-on practice. And after that, it was just like a whole different game. It was just like, yeah, I'm driving in this car. It's no worries now, you know, versus like, oh, I was so tense and tight. And I think that the only thing that changed was... I had practiced more, so I can say that practice is the true key to confidence in anything. It's practicing, practicing, practicing. The more you practice it, the more confident you're going to get, and the more you're going to believe in 
yourself. So yeah, and don't be afraid to fall. That's the biggest thing too. Uh, one of my capoeira instructors, uh, Maestri Lobino. Um, shout out to him. Shout out to my main instructor, Talento, uh, Tally, my Grand Rapids capoeira group, um, for really giving me a strong foundation and, and really Tally for just man. That guy really helped me out a lot. Uh, he continues to help me. I can see his belief in me. And then talking to Maestro Lubino, when we had our, uh, when we got a uh, ceremony, we call it Bachizado. Mm-hmm. And we get our cordial, which is that green cord I have on my wall right there. But anyways, Maestro Lubino said, I think Maestro Suasuna, who is our founder of our Capoeira group, he said, um, if I recall, don't be afraid of the floor. Mm-hmm. And that really stuck with me because it's like, when you flip, cartwheel, whatever you're doing, the floor is your friend. I think he said your floor is your friend. It was something along those lines, and it goes off what you were saying. We'll practice, practice, practice. You're going to fall. If you're trying, you want to learn how to backflip, just be prepared. You know, you don't want to, but be prepared. If you fall, just get back up and do it, do it again. I remember falling on my neck, and I'm like, man, no, this hurts. But it's just like, it hurt for five minutes, but... You get up and you just go for it again because well, it's like I'm not gonna do that again. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> make sure I'm gonna commit. You know what I mean? And um, yeah. that's one of the things I take away from uh, Fifty Cent's book. Um, right now I'm just drawing a blank the name of it, but he talked about overcoming fear. Now living your life in fear, I think that's very important. Uh, overcoming those those roadblocks. But um, once again, it's good to have those teachers around you. Like I said, with my capoeira teachers, even my parkour instructors, Tyler and Alex. Um, those guys really give me my confidence that I need. Even though I'm a confident guy and I train other people, hey, believe in yourself, be confident. People see me like, you're confident. But when I'm in student mode, like I want my teachers to do what they continue to do. And that's believe in me, give me my tips. I love going to my, my main capoeira instructor, Tally, and like, yo, Tally, hey, look at this. And he gives me like a thumbs up or he be like, I, sometimes I'll send him a message and be like, hey, man, go ahead and uh, tell me what I need to do. Be hard on me. He'd be like, all right, I'm about to be hard on you, extra hard. You didn't do this and that. And I'm just like, I love that because it makes me want to get better. I'm a perfectionist exactly. when it comes to my skills. And exactly. so um, I think it's essential, like, you know, the theme of it is practice. Practice, practice, practice. And practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice need, makes perf- the perfect individual in terms of what you're performing. I think you have to define what's perfect for you. You have to define, uh, you have to make sure you have a good practice because, you don't want to practice the wrong things and then you're doing it like the wrong way the entire time because you could hurt yourself. Right. So you got to make sure you have perfect practice. Um, and those reps are essential. Constantly doing it over and over again so you get better and better. So um, I think the gems um, that we dropped today, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Shifting your mindset is very important. Happy New Year, too. Once again, guys, I'm going to say it again after that, too. But, um, guys, anything you guys want to mention about shifting your mindset? Anything else? Um, I can attest to what you said about practice. And I feel like it's important that you find an art. Uh, find an art. It doesn't matter what it is, necessarily. It can be surfing. You know, It can be Taekwondo, Brazilian mm-hmm. Jiu-Jitsu, Kung Fu. It can be art. If you're drawing something, if you're an artist, you know, practice and practice your art. You know, it can be cooking. It can be, uh, it can be a multiple of things, you know, language. Whatever it is, find something like that and practice it and have a goal to work towards. I feel like that's why a lot of people are kind of lost in life is because they don't have a goal that they're working towards. If you have something to chase and you know you're getting closer to it every day, it makes you feel good about it, you know. Um so find those those arts whatever it is that's passionate for you you know i can recall times when i had a full-time job and it's just like i didn't do anything else that day i just went to work it was just like man Mm. what is life you know Mm. i didn't get anything from the day but those days that i wake up and i go to the gym and maybe i do some new exercises and i come home and i cook a new recipe and i got some healthy food now and then i go to work and then i come back and i can say hey today i didn't do a whole lot but i made progress towards my ultimate goal you know and that that makes you feel good and fulfilled about doing something. So uh, doing that, practicing your art, whatever it is, is going to make you feel uh, successful. Even if you're not there yet, you've succeeded in today, you know, and by winning the day. So Yes, and fulfillment. Fulfillment is key. And um, like Will said, I'm going to test it that even more. Finding your art. There's another quote. Mm -hmm. 
that I used to work at when I used to work at the airport. I think it was from Kendall College, and he said, uh, "You were born to create." And I was like, "Man, right. Ooh, whatever it is, yeah. you get lost in." You, you know? were born to create. Like, yes, we are creators, and right now we're creating a lot of elements of fear, um, rejection. We have all this trauma we're dealing with, and we got to do better to project confidence and connectedness, and most importantly, believing in oneself. I'm going to add a little to that, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, your current situation is not your permanent limitation. Ooh! Yeah. Your, the, everything that you're in right now, you only know, you know because of the knowledge that you have. So yes. you can seek extra knowledge, which is going to change your situation. And the moment you do that, whether this podcast gives you enough gems to like see something in a new way, or it gives you the opportunity to say, oh, I can change. Take this as an opportunity to just do a Google search. What do you want to change in your life right now? And take that as a step towards it and let that search build your confidence i love that i love that changing your situation you can always change your situation people always can all this starts what we said before is taking that step that glass of water eating healthy for that one meal cherish and relish those moments of victory because it's important and building who you are your individuality um guys that is our podcast for today our first podcast of 2021 I'm glad we actually started it. Yeah. Um, I know it was on the agenda for a couple it. weeks. Yeah, we can do it. I know. You can do it too. You can do it too. <laughs> you can do it too. And look forward to hearing us every weekend. We're going to make this a priority because okay. we want to help you guys get to those levels that we're currently at and we're currently seeking other levels. We want you guys to do the same thing. Believe in yourself. You were born to create. Let those limitations go. Guys. Great podcast. Great I'm gonna podcast. go ahead and we're gonna we're yeah. signing off. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.